Hey guys, I hope you're doing awesome. Um, today I'm very excited because I want to share with you uh, my testimony, uh, you know, who I am, where I come out of, um, and all that stuff, and I believe this will bless you. Um, I don't want you to think of this testimony as, you know, I don't want you to make me something that I'm not through this. I want you to just see me as a normal person with normal struggles, with, um, you know, trials and tribulations, just like everyone else. Because I think a lot of people think that, you know, when you look at videos like this, you don't see the whole picture um, of the person. You don't know where they come from. And yeah, I just want to give you a glimpse of that um, today. So, cool. Um, so basically, uh, I grew up in a Dutch Reformed church. So it's very traditional, very, you know, kind of you go to church because your mom and dad goes to church and, you know, that kind of thing. And as a as a, a young boy, you know, I hated going to church because it, it, mean, it meant that I had to get up early and I'm not a morning person. And it means that I had to get up early and get out of my bed and go sit in the church for an hour just so I can go home um, and do what I want to do on a Sunday, you know. Um, and, you know, uh, my, my parents were really awesome in that they, they really talked about God and they, they, we grew up with God and with the concept of God. And, you know, that was really amazing and a really big blessing in my life. But it was always, but it was still, there wasn't that relationship. It was just this thing of, you know, God was there and, you know, you, you live your own life and then now and then you pray a prayer just to be right with God. And, you know, it's not, it's a very, um, the traditional view is very, can, can get very shallow, you know. Um, and, you know, then I got to, and I remember as I grew up, um, as, a, as a small boy, what happened is I actually, um, when we lived, we lived in Cape Town in South Africa, um, when I was really, really small still, five or six years old, and um, our, our house or my room caught on fire as I was a young boy, and um, the curtains caught fire against the heater and it, and it lit up my room in fire and um, my whole room burned down around me and then my dad at, at last moment came and, and grabbed me out of my room and and um, yeah it was quite hectic um, and you know when I look back on it now um, and, I sp and I spoke to a lot of other people and you know oftentimes the enemy tries to get our lives when we were young and in my case it was that way then as a young boy I um, you know I went to I started seeking God, you know, I started, you know, when I started getting some intellectuality in my mind, I started thinking, you know, what, is there a God, is there not a God, does He love me, you know, I had this, this party one day, and, um, you know, a birthday party, and my mom and dad, they got me this jumping castle, and I remember everyone left, and it was like the end of the day, and I was just laying there on the castle, kind of like looking into the sky, and I was just like thinking, you know, like, Jesus, like, if you are there, and it was like this calm day. There was like no wind in the air at all. And I just said, you know, Jesus, if you're there, let the wind blow like crazy right now. You know, I just told him that. And and then suddenly this great gust of wind came and, and all the trees like go, went like so crazy. I was just like, whoa, like I had I got a kind of a fright, you know, I didn't expect that. And, um, you know, that didn't prove to me that God existed, but that was a seed that was getting planted. Then um, uh, I... A few years later, I went on a church camp, and um, there was this, you know, we, we went outside to, to praise and worship God, and um, I remember it was also a calm day outside, and um, as we started praising and worshiping, like, this storm came, and this crazy storm started coming, and just, like, all over the place and it started raining like crazy and thunder and roaring started happening and we were outside worshiping and, and everyone just and the Holy Spirit was just like over that was the first time Holy Spirit really overwhelmed me you know and um, when I was done there I was just like whoa you know another seed my, my, my seed was being watered once again you know um, and uh, you know later on I started getting night terrors um, as well uh, when I was probably like uh, 13 years old or so I started or maybe even earlier I started getting these hectic night terrors where um, you know um, I started and it wasn't just nightmares like you know a lot of kids they get nightmares it was a lot more than that um, I had physically this thing come in my dream and it wasn't even in my dream anymore um, and I saw it and it came and it strangled me and 
um, it, it got so bad that it started strangling me when I st when I you know I, I was awake but still it was strangling me and I and I woke and I ran to my parents' room and where they are every night and I just screamed you know screamed and I was too afraid to go to sleep um, and now I know that was a demon um, that was trying to get to me you know just instill a fear inside of me as at an early age so that I can't do anything for the kingdom so I can be afraid of Satan as a boy growing up. And that's why many people are afraid of the enemy or of demons or something because they just want to scare you so you can be useless for the kingdom you know um anyway and you know then i got to a point where where i was just looking at the church and i was looking and this is i was about 16 years old or so i guess you know and i was just thinking like man like god i want to serve you but which way is the right way because there's like 300 million denominations out there and how do i know that this is the right one because i don't want to serve you for 30 years in one denomination and then find out it's completely off completely wrong and then i need to get myself back together because that's what happens to a lot of people and i was seeing that happen and i and i said god i remember the day i was like in my room on my knees and i was like god i want to serve you but lord i need to know the truth whatever that truth is whatever that means no matter how much it hurts me no matter how much i'm going to get persecuted for believing it even if i'm the only person on this earth to believe it if i'm the only person in my family to believe it if i'm the only person among my friends to believe it if it means i'm going to be excommunicated by people or lose friends god i want the truth i don't care what it costs me and i prayed that prayer with a true heart and what happened is a week later my, my mom started we, we left the church we left the traditional church the Dutch Reformed Church and all my friends were like no how are you leaving the church are you you're leaving God now and you know <laughs> all these things and um, you know but I knew that there was something going on and I didn't leave God um, in fact I was drawing closer to him and and my mom started receiving these these teachings from people you know um, which which were which spoke about things like Christmas and and Easter and um, you know just a lot of things that the church or other things that the church are doing that's just not in the Bible and um, you know um, and then it ju and and just opened my mind and it just I just started you know as a young boy I asked my mother like mom like the, uh, I'm reading the Ten Commandments this this what is the seventh day you know and she's like you know you know it's the Sabbath you know the or well you know it's a day of rest you know but then I always thought in the back of my mind okay but why aren't we doing it you know why you know I know there are reasons and we make up reasons but I just wanted the point blank answer why are we not keeping this commandment of God if God asks it from us you know stuff like that just got answered you know God just opened it up to me he showed me that we are actually we've actually departed from his commandments you know we're doing a lot of things um, which the Israelites were doing as they came out of Egypt you know the same stuff you know um, and uh, you know God walked an unusual path with me where he took me out of the church and he and I walked around it and I, and I and I kind of had fellowship with people. He connected me with amazing fellowship and people who I did Bible study with and connected with and spoke about the Torah with and you know um, studied the book with you know the Old Testament and the New Testament, Genesis to Revelation, not compensating, not compromising, reading everything, studying everything, questioning everything. You know, um, and I and I and I did that for years and years. I did that for um, a long time and you know and God in that time God was preparing me um, to 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 speak about these things I believe and um, you know there's uh, there's there's a thing where if you're growing up in the church it's hard to see what is wrong in the church because it becomes normal to you and you don't question it anymore um, but I grew up outside the church and 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 through that God God showed me a lot of things and he allowed me to start questioning a lot of things that we're doing you know um, so yeah and then uh, I had a lot of trials and persecution happen in about 20, 2014, 2013, 2014 a lot of persecution, a lot of bad stuff, a lot of attacks, a lot of, I went through a really rough patch and um, you know it was really a time where I had to seek God or really a time where I needed to trust in him otherwise I wouldn't make it as a Christian <laughs> through it and um, and it was such a blessing going through that trials and tribulation because it built my faith so much 
And um, then last year happened where I was faced with this question once again, God, okay, so I know your, I know your, your book, I know your Bible, and I'm, and I'm reading it, Father, and I'm trying to do my best to keep your commandments, and I'm walking, and I'm starting to walk in your spirit a little bit, but not really, and I'm struggling to love people, you know, that thing is happening to me, and I'm just like, God, I'm reading the book of Acts, but I'm not seeing that happen in my life, God, where is it? You know, where is this? Because this is the way the disciples lived and I'm not living this way. So either you are lying, God, or I'm doing something wrong. And I'm going with the second one. I think that there's something wrong in my heart. And yeah, then I, and then God just gave me the dream and he took me to Hatfield Square. And I'm going to link the testimony of that video in this description because it's a long video, which um, is really good as well, which I just go into depth about the dream and what happened and how I got kick-started by God and and all that as a school boy I remember going to school every day and I was like just walking to school and I was just like saying God please use me today for God just shine my light to people today God just um, use me as your instrument you know I said every single day for for years and years and years since I was a little boy I said God use me as your instrument God use me as your instrument every night you know and um, and you know what and I, and I just started praying like God here I am send me Here I am send me where you want me to go wherever that place is no matter how deep how dark how No matter where it is God send me to that place God if it means I'm not gonna do this or that in my life It means I'm not gonna get what I want to do God it's fine God just send me you see and and by that he did it he was like you know what I'm gonna open door for you you know what he he started giving me dreams and revelations and things and you know it, it just came out of this place of being like God I need you being obedient being seeking him you see people look at me well some people they've they've told me wow PD God is really blessing you you're so special and but I'm not I'm not special I'm blessed because I keep his commandments the Bible says if we keep his commandments you will be blessed if you don't you will be cursed that's what the Bible says. Now it's not a, um, it's not a question. It's just because I'm following His Word and because I'm obedient to it, He raises me up and He exalts me. See, that's the way that it happens. It's not because I am something special or I'm this chosen one or something. Like, don't think that oh, it's just PD. You know, I didn't get this by just, just going to church every day and that's it. I didn't get God by just doing the traditional thing. I got God by seeking His face. I got God by being obedient to His word, by following it no matter what people said around me. You know how many people have told me that the law of God is done away with and I'm doing a, and I'm and I'm wasting my time for keeping the Sabbath and following His commandments. Yet then I look at the fruit of my life and I just look at how He blesses me on the Sabbath and how He blesses me when I keep the other commandments. And then I just think like I just wish everyone could do this because it's so precious, it's so valuable, it's blessed me so much and, and, if, and I know if so, and I've seen it in people's other lives when they keep it, when they do it, man, God just blesses them so much. And then I just think, why are we departing from this? Why are we cursing His commandments and saying His commandments or His grace is enough, we don't need to keep His law in anymore. What if His grace empowers us to keep His law? <laughs> what if Jesus didn't come to do away with the law but to complete it and to show us how to keep it? By His grace, by His mercy, He opened the door for us to be holy. Opened the door for us to be able to keep His commandments, to be holy so because He is holy. See, guys, we need to return to that. We need to return to the walk of the first disciples. And they kept it, man. They walked in, in great things. And they walked in great things not because they just went to church or just because they prayed a prayer or just because this or that. They did it because they sought God with their whole being. They kept His commandments. You know, just this morning I read about um, Solomon, you know, how he, um, God, God used him and blessed him. And God, over and over, God told him, if you and the, your children keep my commandments, my rules, my statutes, then, then I will bless you. Then I will exalt you among the nations. Then your kingdom will do well. And then he started listening to his wife. His, he, he had foreign wives, you know, a lot of foreign people and who served other gods. And he started serving their gods and start moving away from the God of Israel. And just in that moment, boom, he started going downhill. Start, armies raised were raised up against his kingdom and stuff just started going really bad with for him
And see, that is it. And we say, oh no, but that's Old Testament. Come on, man. Nothing has changed. God gave us the Old Testament so we can learn from it. Stop saying that that's the Old Testament. We need to do away with that. Because Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I came to fulfill it, to complete it. Not to do it so that you don't have to, but to do it so that you can know how. To do it so you can see this is how I walk. That's why Jesus kept the Torah and the prophets. That's why his disciples kept the Torah and the prophets. Even after he ascended into heaven. After he went. It, Holy Spirit came and he, they were enabled. And the law, the Torah and the prophets were wrote, written on their hearts. So they can fulfill it. So they can walk it out. So they can show it to people how to do it. Man, it's not done away with. And if it was done away with, why is, you know, look at my life, man. If it's done away with, why is God blessing me? If it's done away with, why do I have fruit? If it's done away with, you know, it doesn't make sense. Then I should, then I'm like under this yoke, under this burden. You know, people tell me, oh, Pete, it's such a burden to keep the law. And I'm just like, man, it's not a burden. It's the most thing that sets you free. Because, you know, like, for example, the Sabbath, it's this day that sets you free from the world. It's this day where you tell the world, get out of my way. I'm going to rest today. I'm going to spend time with Jesus today. I'm going to spend time with my father today. And people call that a burden. If that's a burden to you, I, I guess that's it. But it's not a burden to me. It's the most free thing ever. Like God said, day apart from me and tell, told me listen you can rest on this day I did um, Genesis 2 verse 3 said I created th this day cr made it set apart this day is holy be holy on it set yourself apart from the world do not do what the world does on this day because you are my bride because I love you you see and and the same for all the commandments of God you know he did it to protect us, to bring us freedom from disease and sickness. You know, the Bible even says, you know, if you keep my statutes and my commandments, you will not get the, the sicknesses of Egypt, of the of the world. And that's it, man. I'm, I, have, I don't get sick anymore. I don't get diseases. You know, God bless. Praise God. You know, praise God. I don't get diseases. But part of that is because I am obedient. I follow his rules and he knows how my body works. He knows I need rest. He knows that, you know, what I need to eat and what I shouldn't eat. He knows how I sh ought to be. And when I walk in that the instruction manual of my life, which is not abolished, <laughs> And you know, it's not, it's not like the root of my salvation, it's the fruit of my salvation. Doing the, being obedient to Him is not to, to be saved. It's because I am saved, because I love, I'm loving, because I'm accepted, I do this, I walk this out. Not to be accepted, because I am. Because He died for me, praise God, He died for me. To be able to be holy, to open a door for me, to, and to pick me up when I fall. When I'm not able to keep it, when I, when I, you know, when... When I'm imperfect, you know, He picks me up. But see, He didn't die for me to be lawless. He didn't die for me to walk in sin. He died for me to be free from it and not a slave to it anymore. And sin is the transgression of the law. That's what John says, you know. Cool, so guys, let's return to that, man. God, is, God loves us and He wants us to walk and He wants us to walk in righteousness. He wants us to be blessed. We aren't just righteous by saying we believe in Jesus. We are righteous by, 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 by walking it out, by walking as Jesus. You know, he, and Jesus walked in the law of the Father. He walked in righteousness and He followed it. He even instructed His disciples to, to f listen to the, to the law of Moses and walk it out, but not be hypocrites towards it. So why are we saying the law of Moses is done away with if they, if they walked it out? Come on, man. Come on, let's, let's return to that. It's not, we don't have to make excuses anymore. We don't have to, um, you know, um, do all kinds of weird stuff, play church. Come on, let's just return to that. Jesus loves us and He wants to bless us, but He can't bless us if we don't follow the commandments that He gave us. You know, He a lot of people we say, why aren't we blessed? Why are things going so bad? You know, and I just imagine God saying, well, why aren't you doing the things that I told you to do? Why aren't you walking in my rules and my commandments, the, the word, the Bible that I gave you? I love you. That's why I gave it to you. You know, Adam and Eve, kept his instructions you know he didn't have they didn't have a bible yet but he walked among them and he gave them instructions some of the first of do not eat of the of the tree you see and that was one of the first instructions that he gave them and and you know and then here comes satan and says did he really say that did god really say that and the same way he says did god does god really law really matter does god really care if we keep his law let me submit to you that god cares very much so much.
and that the breaking of the law is the reason number one reason that the man that man fell the number one reason that the flood had to come the number one reason that Jesus died for you so why do you think that you can break that law now just because he died for you he died because you broke it now stop breaking it and walk in obedience okay <laughs> guys God loves us this is rich to turn to that may God bless you and keep you um, have an amazing day and uh, God bless you so much <laughs>